We begin this hour with breaking news. Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich has been taken into federal custody, charged with, among other things, trying to essentially sell the president-elect's soon-to-be-vacant Senate seat. The governor has the sole power to appoint a replacement, and the feds say they caught him soliciting bribes during more than one recorded phone call. And that's just one of the charges facing the governor, as well as his chief of staff, John Harris, who was also arrested. We're, we're expecting the governor to appear in court later today. The U.S. Attorney's Office will hold a news conference at noon Eastern that will bring you uh, live. So again, Rob Blagojevich, the Illinois governor, and his chief of staff uh, arrested on federal corruption charges. Apparently there was cooperation with this investigation. Started some three years ago, but apparently extended even through this past election um, when Barack Obama won the election, uh, when, when uh, uh, pardon me. When the um, when the president elect was first elected, of course that put the power by Rod Blagojevich, um, it put it in his hands to name Barack Obama's replacement. And now what the feds are alleging is that the governor was soliciting bribes in order to name Barack Obama's replacement. They say that they have that on several phone calls, and uh, and so we're waiting to hear from the feds what those phone calls recorded. Uh, we know that Blagojevich and his chief of staff, John Harris, both arrested by FBI agents. Um, apparently, there was ongoing criminal activity, according to the feds, that they had conspired to get personal financial benefits for the governor by leveraging the fact that he has sole authority to name Barack Obama's replacement to the Senate. Um, they say that he had threatened to withhold substantial state assistance to, for instance, a newspaper company in connection with the sale of Wrigley Field, that, that he, um, he wanted the editorial board members fired because they had been critical of the governor. So he was using his authority in ways that were inappropriate and perhaps illegal. Uh, the governor is 51 years old. Joining me now, CNBC's uh, John Harwood. Uh, he's the chief Washington correspondent. This is going to rock, isn't it, John, the political world. When you have the sole power to name the replacement, the person who steps into the shoes of Barack Obama in the Senate because he's moving to the White House, and if the feds uh, can prove this claim, they're alleging he was asking for money in return. This is jaw-dropping stuff, Contessa. You know, we, we've all thought we've seen some outrageous uh, uh, episodes of corruption. Remember Duke Cunningham, uh, the uh, uh, revelations about uh, uh, bribes and inducements that he got uh, in relation to military contracts and that kind of, you know, federal pork sort of stuff. But the idea that this governor, if these uh, charges are proven to be correct, was in effect selling this seat and seeking financial benefits overtly from people while uh, trying to select Barack Obama's replacement it is unbelievable like nothing else I've ever seen and it also goes to show you how the unexpected can step up and uh, interfere with all of the best laid plans that Barack Obama has uh, of uh, as he moves to Washington you know we, we always talk about the unexpected in politics Contessa and uh, the idea that something out of left field could come how, somehow come uh, uh, compromise his uh, Barack Obama's message and s simply interfere with uh, his attempt to arrange a, uh, a transition. Uh, it's uh, but, th this is a reminder but, of that. But uh, Lynn Sweet joins me now as well. Uh, and and Lynn, given that this is your home city of Chicago, um, did this really come out of left field? I mean, was this this was a long publicized corruption investigation? The the part that comes out of left field for me is that it extends even past this particular election. He knew he was being investigated. Why would you allegedly do something like that? Well, this, the, right, the left field part is that he was engaged in crossing the line and dealing with the Senate seat and in threatening uh, Tribune board members. This corruption investigation has been going on for a long, long time. Now, I think in Illinois, there are wide open campaign laws. There's no caps on anything. And sometimes, yeah, there's a way of fig what Rod McGlarvich, I believe, wanted to try to do is to pick a Senate candidate that could also help his political future. Now we know that it might have been, might have been, that he wanted to help his financial future too, too. Now, it looks like he was trying to figure out what would have been okay is if he had picked a candidate who can help him raise money. That stepped on the side that stays okay. You don't get in trouble with the law, you don't get arrested. What it appears that he might have done was to have tried to link directly and go over the line campaign contributions with the appointment of a Senate candidate the way it might have worked. 
of course, is to pick somebody who had uh, financial backers who could also be helpful to him. Okay, so they're going. The Fed, you know, the feds can take him into federal custody. They can charge him, but of course, there there would have to be uh, a trial. He has to be convicted. Oh, yeah. There's a long process to jump from being taken into federal custody to this. That that being said, um, how does this now affect the government in Illinois? The naming of the replacement for Barack Obama. I mean, here's Blagojevich, who a few weeks ago was out in California alongside. Um, uh, the governor of California with that big environmental conference they were having becoming the talking face of this environmental conference yesterday we saw him out at the sit-in with the factory workers and he was asked even then yes. Lynn was there a, cr a cloud hanging over and you said no there's nothing but sunshine hanging over me so how does this affect what's happening in Illinois well, this puts a big cloud over it. I talked to Governor Begorovich last week in one of the only extended interviews he ever gave on this topic, and I had yeah, the impression after that he wanted to try to use this appointment to clean up his image. Now, again, in Illinois, the way you do it on the right, you know, where you don't get in trouble with the law is that if you found a political benefit from it, if you found that whoever you picked had some you know, donors that could help you out, that's the way, you know, that's the Illinois way of doing it, the Chicago way, where you don't get in trouble. Well, have you, Boy, you, that was his goal, guys, it sure not worked it out too well. Did, uh, Lynn, Absolutely I'm not. I'm curious, no, did you, did you know face. about this, uh, this story? And again, this is what the feds are alleging, that he had threatened to withhold um, some financing, some government deals with the Tribune Company on Wrigley Field because he wanted the editorial uh, board members who were writing bad things about him, he wanted them fired. No, that I didn't know. I'm not privy to the inside of the Chicago Tribune uh, editorial board uh, machinations, but you know, Chicago's a hardball place. But the and some of the stuff that goes on, frankly, that I've reported on through the years, you might say, "Oh my God, Lynn, this is terrible," and I kind of would just say, "Well, that's how they do it," because they, you know, you go up to the line. This is a political environment when a lot of people, a lot of big names, go right up to the line. Yeah. The problem here, apparently, in the stuff that's coming out right now, is is that Rod went over it. Also, he's you know he's he's kind of talkative. Uh, if there were wires there, he might have. Uh, and this is what will be sorted out. He he might have said stuff that sounds worse than it is, or, or whatever. And, but and he guys. Said, and he over the appointment. In terms of the taping, over the appointment. he has said, you know, you can tape me um, wide out in the open. You know, I don't really like being taped secretively. It reminds me of Watergate and Nixon. But I mean, John, this is this is very serious stuff for the state of Illinois, and and potentially for who will represent Illinois in the Senate. Yeah, I gotta say, Contessa, this introduces a complication. If, in fact, uh, Rod Blagojevich uh, does not step aside, if he ends up making this appointment while under this cloud, it introduces a real level of complication for the person who might accept that job. Now, I, I'm not sure, given the way politics works, that anybody would turn it down for that reason, but they're going to have to uh, carry Rod Blagojevich with them into yeah. the election that follows in 2010. All right, John, Lynn, we'll Unless there are, there, there, it's still, there will be ways to get out of it, even with the cloud, perhaps by having a candidate we haven't heard of, absolutely a blue ribbon uh, candidate who we would... Uh, would be able to vet beforehand and be clear not a part of it. Big, big complication right now in the appointment of the next senator from Illinois. We will wait and, and see what this news conference reveals in terms of what they have on the recordings um, and the details of the charges that they plan to bring against the Illinois governor. Lynn, John, thank you both.